What's up, guys? It's Matt from Rick Patriot News. Right next to me is Romeo. And today we have an article for you guys, and it's about Fannie Willis and what's going on with her in Georgia. She refused to take a subpoena from the uh, Judicial House Committee, so they decided to use U.S. Marshals to uh, to uh, pretty much uh, to uh, subpoena her. You've been served. Oh, yeah. this, is, this is beautiful. Let's take a look. U.S. Marshals intervened to hand deliver subpoena to Fannie Willis after she refused to be served from the House Judiciary Committee. Soros-funded Fulton County District Attorney Fannie Willis was personally served a subpoena by the U.S. Marshals Service after she failed to acknowledge the same request sent via email Earlier this month, the House Judiciary Committee issued subpoenas to D.A. Willis, demanding the release of documents from her office. The action, This action comes amid rising concerns and reports alleging corruption in her role as Fulton County's district attorney. Michael Roman, a former Trump campaign official and co-defendant in the racketeering case led by Willis, moved to accuse both Willis and Wade of misconduct. The motion, spearheaded by Roman's attorney, Ashley Merchant, alleges an improper clandestine personal relationship between Willis and Wade, potentially undermining the integrity of the prosecution against Trump and others. According to the court document reviewed by the Gateway Pundit, the district attorney chose to appoint her romantic partner, who at all times relevant to this prosecution has been a married man. Admittedly, this is a bold allegation, considering it's directed to one of the most powerful people in the state of Georgia, the Fulton County District Attorney. Nevertheless, the District Attorney's fame and power do not change the fact that she decided to appoint as the special prosecutor a person with whom she had a personal relationship and is, who is now leading the day-to-day -day prosecution of this case. Even assuming this type of nepotism might be forgiven in the abstract, a review of the amount of money that the special prosecutor has been paid by the district attorney and the personal activities of the district attorney and the special prosecutor during the pendency of this prosecution shed light on just how self-serving this arrangement has been. The motion filed also suggests that Wade financed luxury vacations with Willis using funds from Fulton County. Information obtained outside the court's filings indicates that the district attorney and the special prosecutor have traveled personally together to such places as Napa Valley, Florida, and the Caribbean, and the special prosecutor has purchased tickets for both of them to travel on both the Norwegian and Royal Caribbean cruise lines. Traveling together to make such places as D Washington DC or New York City might make sense for work purposes in the light of other pending litigation, but what work purpose could only be served by travel to this traditional vacation destinations? Judiciary Cha Chairman Jim Jordan has publicly questioned Willis's conduct on social media. Did Fannie Willis misuse federal grant money for personal benefit? Did she misuse Georgia taxpayer money for personal benefit? Why aren't the Democrats asking these questions, Jordan tweeted. Following these allegations, Chairman Jordan issued a subpoena to Willis after she reportedly did not comply with initial document requests. These requests were in connection to her indictment of former President Donald Trump and accusations that Willis terminated an employee for attempting to prevent a senior campaign aide from misappropriating federal funds. According to audio obtained by the Free Beacon, in 2021, Amanda Timpson, Timpson an employee in the Fulton County DA's office, warned Fannie Willis. An aide in the office was going to use $488,000 in federal grant earmarked for the creation of a center of youth empowerment and gang prevention to pay for swag, computers, and travel. The refusal to accept the subpoena via email led to the involvement of the U.S. Marshals. A source close to the matter expressed frustration to the Daily Caller, questioning Willis's compliance 
and pointing out the unnecessary expenditure of taxpayer money due to her avoidance. Why wouldn't Fannie Willis just accept service like anyone else? Making the U.S. Marshals Service use taxpayer money to do this is a complete waste of time and resources, but she wouldn't be surprised when it comes to her office. Okay, I'm a little pissed off because they had to use taxpayer money to actually give her the subpoena, and all she had to do was look at an email. That's all she had to do. That's right. They couldn't get to her, so they had to use the U.S. Marshals to deliver a subpoena. And this is... We're in uncharted political territory um, in American history. First of all, these charges in this whole case are bogus. Second, um, she hired her boyfriend and paid him $650,000. And Matt, he is an ambulance chaser lawyer and not a good one. So this stinks to high heaven, but I'm glad Jim Jordan and the house are going to hold her accountable. It's beautiful. Now, the case you're talking about the, uh, is fake charges is the one against Trump. The one against her is not. Oh, yeah. uh, I think uh, they're looking into her the right way. The only question I have is, I'm surprised they could find a U.S. Marshal uh, that would do this because I'm surprised uh, because they're busy being at the border, being babysitters, and also following J6ers. So, Obviously, there might be something on the way there. They went ahead and used that them to give that subpoena. But <laughs> I'm just saying, yeah. uh, I was surprised they had time. Yeah, I agree with you. This this typically isn't a U.S. Marshal task. The yeah. fact that they had to use the marshals uh, tells you a lot about this case. Yeah, yeah, and I have a feeling. It's just going to get more and more complicated. But guys, this is the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed. Please hit that like button, comment, and share this out to everybody. And if you would, please turn the notifications bell on just so you know when we make new content. We'll be live Monday morning at 930 Central Standard. Have a wonderful rest of your day.